because you have to listen to every single one. No one out there has ever listened to my voice more than Phoenix. <laughs> You're the most decorated racquetball player in U.S. history. World's strongest man. From childhood passion to professional athlete. Eight-time Ironman champion. So what was it like making your debut in the NHL? What is your biggest piece of advice for the next generation of athletes? From underdogs to national champions. This is the Athletes Podcast, where high-performance individuals share their triumphs, defeats, and life lessons to educate, entertain, and inspire the next generation of athletes. Here we go. What's it been a year? What? Since you took over? producing over no year and a half now year and a half probably now still one of our most downloaded episodes ever that's just because i have a very large family (laughs) shout out to you guys keeping my episode episode 23 in top 10 what are your goals for this episode avoid saying like yeah maybe said it a few too many times i had never been on anything though you crushed it it was good thank you that was our first conversation after i asked you for pancakes at the bar waffles that too either way 210th episode of the athletes podcast thank you folks for joining we even have rose in attendance here rose come say hi to everyone there she is smile (laughs) uh 210th episode of the athletes podcast as long as we give rose some love and hopefully you folks learn a thing or two during this episode We put out these episodes every week on Thursday, and I can't thank you folks enough for tuning in, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening. This is the Athletes Podcast. We talk with high performers, athletes, coaches, nutritionists, everyone in the fitness, health, and wellness space. This is only the second time ever we've had a repeat guest, and that's because she's a special gal. Not only is she the producer of the Athletes Podcast, she's also the gal I get to call my girlfriend. Just, there you go. Yeah, she shall adjust. She knows. This ain't her first rodeo either. She just wants to be on camera. Star of the, the show. Whole fam. Star of the show. Espresso. Rose has always been the star of the show, so nothing's new here. We should mention as we uh, start this episode, a little cheers to uh, Athletes Apothecary Tea, keeping cheers. us hydrated, filled with antioxidants. Hydrate better, recover faster. So good. If you haven't listened to episode 23, I highly recommend you go listen to that first. We're not. (laughs) (laughs) Just to give context, we're not necessarily going to speak directly about Phoenix's athletic background during this episode. We also want to cover what we've done for the past year and a half, traveling abroad, interviewed hundreds of athletes since you joined the team, uh, really taking the podcast to the next level between your editing, your creative mind. Phoenix is a social media marketer, the co-founder of Rise Virtually, as well as the producer of the Athletes Podcast. Someone who we're welcoming to the show for the second time. Phoenix, thanks for coming on. Of course, I'm excited to be back. (laughs) In front of the camera this time. In front of the camera, where most say you belong. uh, (laughs) And uh, most try and suggest for me to get behind the camera, but you know, we keep showing up here and we keep (laughs) doing this thing. Uh, I like behind the scenes, so I'm good with that. You do a good job. You Thank are you. Uh, phenomenal at what you do. There's a reason why you have a plethora of clients under your portfolio now, under a year in the, a year over the works now? For- yeah, it's been about a year since starting Rise Virtually uh, back in January after kind of figuring out what direction I want to take it. I have passion for marketing and um, I also have a passion for sports and athletics. So today I want to talk about athletes growing their online brand, their personal brand, because it's such a big industry now for athletes to be able to work with different companies, work with different sponsorships and not only make money, but to be able to grow their persona as an athlete. It's crazy. Since the last time you came on, Name, image, and likeness has become a thing, right? That wasn't something in 2019 when you were in school. That wasn't something that kids, when during their undergrads, had the opportunity to monetize on their name, image, and likeness. Guys like Reggie Bush actually lost out on opportunities because they took a thousand bucks and some cash in an envelope. The unfortunate, I guess the fortunate part, there's two ends to this, Mm -hmm. right? The first being we're getting athletes paid which is the priority, right? We had young athletes, NCAA athletes were getting taken advantage of for years, decades. Frankly, NCAA was taking advantage of it. The organizing bodies, the institutions, they were all taking advantage of young athletes. That's not happening. 
Yeah. And when I was in school, it wasn't a thing to grow your personal brand as an athlete to seek out the sponsorships because that was against the code. That was against the rules. So I've had that. I have that background as being a varsity athlete, played golf, played soccer, as Dave previously mentioned. But now I'm able to apply that and share that mentality. And now my knowledge as the co-founder of Rise Virtually, a marketing agency where we work with all different individuals and clients in order to grow their online presence. So I can combine my two worlds in order to help current athletes and future athletes monetize on their their name, image, and likeness in Canada as well as the U.S. Whether you're a high school athlete, whether you're a university athlete, you now have the ability to monetize on who you are as a human being and the work that you've put in in your athletic sport. And it can seem daunting to be able to like to do it. It's thinking of creating and editing all this content and putting it out there and that for some people it might feel like they're taking away from their sport or their training, that sort of thing. But you can make it very a very seamless process. Documenting simple things as such as behind the scenes of your training, what does your workouts look like? What does your nutrition look like? What is your day to day? What is your bond like with your teammates? What are you wearing to game day? Like little things like that are what people are posting about and you want it to you're building a relationship with your followers and with your community they want to get to know the real you so starting just from the basics you just need to share your life and your journey as an athlete in order to grow that audience naturally and organically we're not asking you to become social media influencers okay you can still be your hockey soccer basketball volleyball playing self toss your camera on at the same time right you can receive a package Film it. Unboxing. Super simple. Now, I say this. I'm terrible for it. Phoenix can attest to this. I don't always like being in front of the camera. I run a podcast. I've been doing this for four years. There's pros and cons to the life that we chose. The fact of the matter is, now as an athlete, you need to also understand that you have a presence online, and that matters. There are NCAA institutions that are recruiting based on how many followers you have on social media. That is a wild thing to wrap your head around as an athlete it maybe sucks it's the fact of the matter though it's a subjective sport sometimes a subjective world i should say and you need to be aware of the fact that hey if you have other aspects to you that are exciting your personality the fact that you like mayonnaise or any other subject you know i'm using will from will levis the Mm -hmm. tennessee titans quarterback he's got a mayo deal now like mayonnaise did just you? keep it simple. Keep it authentic to who you are. Like we said, like set up your camera just as you're training, like your phone on the ground, wherever. Get a little tripod stand if you want to go the extra mile or create an aesthetic if you want to go that extra mile. Like what does what is your brand? What are you representing? What do you want your audience to see? Whether you're feeling like you're sharing with just your family and friends or people around the world, just share who you are. It doesn't have to go super personal, but share what your life is like as an athlete. And just start now. Just start doing it. There's not a better time than today. And be so impactful for your career. So you want to know the top five NIL valuations right now, according to uh, on3.com? Go for it. Coming in at number five, do you have any guesses? If I was to give you the names of the five, would you rank them one to five? Would sure. you do that? Okay. So we have Livy Dunn is not one on the list. Mm-hmm. Mikey Williams, basketball player. Arch Manning, football player. Also grandson, son of some other Manning brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bronny James. Did I say that? Bronny James, Arch Manning, Mikey Williams, Caleb Williams, and Livy Dunn. Can you rank where those five would be? Also, the fact there's only one female on there, we're fixing that too with Cook Stark Management. Is one, like one being the top, you mean? <sighs> yeah. For the most that they're making in NIL? Yeah. I'm going to say Libby Dunn's probably number one. She's not uh, number one. I'm going to say she's number two then. Uh, really? I'm shocked. I don't know. She's always all over social media. so She's number five. It's okay. Wow. I, I think this might be old. Uh, That's got to be old. I'm assuming it's, yeah, it's, old. Um, yeah, it's old. James? Yeah. Bronnie James. Bronnie, Bronnie James. James is number one. Um, either way. The fact of the matter is there's a broad scope. There's a football player. There's a basketball player. There's a gymnast on there. Mm-hmm. There's a basketball player. You have options as an athlete. You are not handcuffed based on what sport you play. You simply need to take the opportunity that you have right now in front of you and action on it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't Nowadays, it doesn't matter what kind of amenities that your sport receives or the funding that it has. The content that you make can generate that content 
that income for yourself and that profit and create the experience that you want it to be. So just because maybe the school that you chose doesn't have state-of-the-art facilities, you can still make engaging content that grows your audience that's going to make that experience for you that much better and provide products or brand deals that are going to help with your training and further your training. So regardless of the school that you attend or the sport that you play, that you can still train at the top level and reach your career goals in that sport. And it's also as easy as making sure that some of the products that you use are incorporated into your videos. Like this week's episode sponsored by Athletes Apothecary, some high quality tea for athletes to make sure that you are hydrated, rejuvenated and energized. But we also just drink this stuff every night. So it's not hard, right? Work with brands that you like, like look into your closet, look into your everyday activities and see what are you wearing? What are you consuming? And what are you interacting with? And go after those brands, reach out to those brands or do content in those brands consistently. And if you develop enough of a following, then they'll be reaching out to you hopefully. So work with brands that you authentically enjoy and consume and want to be a part of because that's going to make your content go a lot further. Your audience is going to see it's an organic relationship and it's not being forced into something that you don't typically use or enjoy. It's funny. I was having this conversation with Lander because we're getting a ton of products sent to our Cook Stark management LDC talent gals, LMNT being some of them, right? And we're talking about deliverables and what they should be kind of expecting in return and what we should be providing to the brands that are sending this stuff. And like he said, like I said earlier, you don't need to be a social media influencer. You got to post a, hey, thanks, Athletes Apothecary for sending us some tea. It's been amazing. And then maybe post you drinking it. And you're like, holy crap, that just provided hundreds of thousands of views potentially to that brand. In return, you showcase the fact to your community that you're a tea drinker, that you're health conscious, that maybe it's your night time routine that you do with your significant other. And now you might have other opportunities you might have a blue light blocking glasses brand reach out to you because they see the fact that you're using blue light blocking glasses when you're drinking your tea at 9 p.m mm -hmm. and then you've got a magnesium company reaching out because they know the benefits of that for sleep yes and coming from not only from working and interacting with my clients but also them working and interacting with athletes themselves please put a little bit of effort into the content if they're reaching out obviously it needs to be an equal deal that you're receiving um a fair trade for the product and the content that you're creating but put a little bit a little bit of enthusiasm into it not faking it but if you're actually gonna work with a brand make sure you're enjoying it show that you enjoy it, show that you care about it, show that it's important to you. And it can be super simple and super easy to film. Just add a little bit of enthusiasm to it because it's going to go a long way with them. It's going to make working with them a lot easier and they're going to want to repeat um, business with you most likely in the future. I think the other thing that's important to bring up, again, something that I should be doing more of, but highlighting the highs and the lows. We're all human being at the end of the day human beings. And the fact of the matter is not every single day is sunshine and rainbows. And I bring that up on the podcast with athletes to try and help the next generation understand that that might not be the case from professional sport and to get that association out of their head. But to take it a step further, it's just an extension of real life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to be front facing on the camera and recording a podcast on days that you're not as excited mm -hmm. or that you're not as energetic or upbeat and sometimes and it's okay to show that and sometimes you got to do that on the ice or on the field too right yes. yeah you're, as an athlete you know that when it's game time it's game time you got to be there you got to be mentally present and so sometimes creating content that's what you have to do you're not necessarily putting on a facade but you're getting into game mode so maybe you can think of that to get into that mindset putting on that game face doing what needs to get done if you if you're committed to growing your brand then you're going to show up the same way you'd show up to practice same way you show up to game you're going to be there you're going to be present and you're going to put in an effort that being said social media is not easy it is draining there's reasons why people get anxiety around it or stressed about it people comment on things they they send dms or they don't like content that you're creating but for the most part, I would try and separate the personal from the professional when it comes to that. Um, if you reach a further point in your career and you're a professional athlete, they're not gonna like the way you play sometimes. So thinking of things like that when you're interacting with social media is just making sure that 
you're keeping a forward head, you're in game mode, and it's part of the business. How would you start it if you were back in school right now? What would you be doing? I only say that because I think it's important for young athletes, actually any athlete at any age. We have Ian Hill, who I'm friends with now, who's over 50 years old, who's trying to be the oldest man ever to play NCAA football. What should he be doing? What should the 20-year-old who's just jumping into school be doing to try and establish that brand on social media? I would embrace the point of life that you're at. So whatever point of your career you are, whatever age that you are, embrace that. Embrace the journey of where you've gotten to. So if you're a young athlete, say you're in high school, acknowledge that you're in high school. Share the ups and downs of being a high school athlete. Share the teams that you're playing on at the school or outside of it. I'm going to say it's going to be pretty similar content across the board for most of the athletes. It's sharing your training re- regime, sharing your nutrition, sharing the highs and lows of games and how you played and maybe some tips and tricks that you want to share with your audience, maybe the jersey that you're wearing. But for instance, like if you're a high school athlete and then you're a university athlete, well, sharing maybe the facility or sharing your teammates or what it's like to be a university athlete and adding academics on top of it. If you're a 50 year old athlete, it's like, Make that part of your brand. That's who you are. That's It's a challenge in itself. Well, otherwise, you probably wouldn't be going after it in the way that you are. So acknowledge the place that you're at in your career or with your age and make that part of your brand. And that will grow with you. So obviously, if you're in high school, you're going to be showing, documenting the high school journey of an athlete, working with your studies, your team, your school, after school activities. Then you're going to go on to university or college or professional you're going to share that journey as well. And people, your audience is going to grow with you too. So whatever part of the journey you're at, embrace it, acknowledge it and share it. One other point that I would add to that is just treating it like a job. Mm-hmm. When, when you're in school, you might not realize it at that moment, but I, tr- I promise you that there's a ton of extra time during your day-to-day activities. Uh, even if it's maybe winter time, Right now, for instance, and it's negative 20 or 30 here in Canada, whether you're on the West Coast, wherever you are, and you've got a little extra time on your hands because you can't spend as much time outside. Dedicate 30 minutes to social media, creating content that can be written on LinkedIn or on X, that could be visual, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. You could be streaming on Twitch. There are hundreds of athletes making millions of dollars on Twitch right now. That is something I also might consider doing because I've gotten my video game fix in. I love to play Madden, NHL. I've been playing some VR. You know, we mix it up and you got to have some fun and I got to share more of that kind of stuff, right? And like, I feel like I'm giving advice to people and I should be taking my advice as well. Often the way it goes. Yeah. We often, it's tough to take your own advice sometimes. But um, that being said, as athletes, like, we thrive on schedule. So create a schedule. If that's what you need to be consistent with it, because consistency is key on social media. The algorithm does not like inconsistency. If you're posting once here, a different time here, totally different date, like it's not going to pick up your content and shoot it out to a large audience as if it would, if you're being consistent with it. And I don't necessarily mean every single day, that would be ideal, but Just be consistent with it. Create a schedule if that's what you need to stay on top of it and just stick to it. Whether Treat it like as if it's practice. So you're going to go to practice. Well, you have scheduled practices. So make sure you have scheduled time to create the content, grow your brand, whatever that looks like. Or take your camera with you, take your phone, whatever you're filming on and set it up during those practices or during those games. Get content. I'm sure there's other people documenting the games going on or the practices going on and or you're at the gym like we had previously mentioned any of those things can be considered content so maybe if you get it more organically so if someone's filmed a game well then schedule in time slots to edit that content or take chunks of it and post it that's all it takes as an athlete we understand it's got to be a schedule you got to be disciplined with it if you want it to grow and be successful i want to showcase a couple examples of people who might be ideal for listeners to go and check out review see what they're doing uh the first being mitchell pelkey i'm sure you're gonna put a nice little photo image thumbnail of him doing the (laughs) whatever that one is uh (laughs) that one's all a little kickstart for him but he's obvious creator who's crushing crushing it right now ohio state lacrosse player div one obviously there's a ton that comes with attending a university and institution like that 
Got to use what you got. Emma Malte, same thing. She yeah. was able to build her brand. I also think of someone like Mitchell Hooper, who a couple of years ago was competing in bodybuilding competitions down in Australia and is now a world's strongest man and has over 100,000 Instagram followers and has been able to basically over the span of you know three, four years build a following that he's going to have for the rest of his life because he's now marketed as the world's strongest man. And as an athlete, it's a little bit easier to find your niche when it comes to that. For instance, he chooses in the gym comedy routines and it he's in the gym. That's where he is. That's his sport. He's showing the humor behind the highs and lows of that training. And so as an athlete, you already have that niche. You have your sport, what you're doing. And so people are going to tune in because that's the content that they want to consume. Yeah. Uh, you bring up comedy and gym. I have to think of someone like Rebecca, Rebecca. Fusilier. Uh, Hilarious. You have to go check out her stuff if you haven't. She's she, so funny. She's the best. I, so authentic. Yes. And like, just if you are into gym, health, fitness, CrossFit, dog content, you will love what Rebecca's putting out there. It's amazing. Uh, I flew down to Dallas, Texas to be able to have her conversation. She's absolutely hilarious. I'm trying to think of some others who we've had on over the past four years who do a great job in the social. Mino does a good job at creating content and hers is simply her traveling and competing and it's nutrition. incredible content yeah and her and nutrition, nutrition yeah. and all natural makeup brands that sort of thing but that that's all encompassing what she believes in and what her foundation is as an individual and that share shows through all of her content the other one uh, monica clisara yeah definitely uh we filmed when we were in toronto actually that was over a year and a half ago now but she from the time of recording Within roughly three months, she had signed her WWE NXT contract. No big deal. We're not going to say it was all because of the Athletes podcast, <laughs> but it definitely didn't hurt the additional exposure she received there. Uh, Demi Chalkius, who we met up with during the first AP tour mm -hmm. up in... Uh, Bowmanville. Bowmanville. Shout out to Bowmanville. <laughs> chocolate ice caps. We had those there. Trust me. Just made with like chocolate milk. Yeah. Yeah, you can get those at Timmy's. Okay, well, sorry. It was she asked for them. <laughs> I brought them. You know, that's what I remember about Bowmanville. Because you have to listen to every single one. No one out there has ever listened to my voice more than Phoenix. <laughs> that might have to be the way we start this episode, and it, we have to give her a round of applause <laughs> for dealing with Dave's voice on a daily basis. Whether it's recording, listening, editing the Athletes Podcast. Or I doing... listen to it once when we're recording. Listen to it a second time when I go through the initial <laughs> cut. And then about 50,000 more times when I'm making the content. <laughs> and then when she's done her work day and I'm done mine, I'm like, hey, babe, let's talk about the podcast. <laughs> uh, boundaries. Like... That's a good one. Mm. So we set boundaries, obviously, in our relationship. It's also important to set boundaries with social media. Set boundaries with when you're creating, how much you're consuming it, whether you're just mindlessly scrolling and getting into that TikTok tunnel vision or you're on there to actively work and contribute to your brand. Just making sure that you're being aware of those boundaries that you're setting and how frequently you're interacting on social media because that's huge on your mental health as well. And setting those boundaries will really help separate that personal from professional um, perspective. I agree. <laughs> Let's transition here because I think this is the 210th episode of the Athletes Podcast. And one of the things that our emphasis, at least for 2024, is building more community out and then also ensuring that we keep our fitness, health, and wellness as a top priority. Um, and then impacting kind of having our community as a part of that. So it's all intertwined at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I know we've been trying to brainstorm over the past couple of weeks, months really around how we can see that through to fruition. And I think it would be interesting. I know there's stuff like 75 hard out there and there's different fitness challenges that people take part in and they maybe get on the wagon and they see some progress for a little bit of time, but it doesn't last. And there isn't that consistency piece. Mm -hmm. And every athlete coach knows how important consistency is and they really know that it's the key to achieving long-term success um how can we maybe you and i brainstorm this during this podcast to build out something that people can see as a viable option to jump in on or maybe we can create some type of community from this conversation i think what would be unique and fun 
with the theme of this episode would be to create some type of challenge, but a sustainable challenge. So we it takes about two weeks to build a habit. Obviously, we want to go days? a little bit longer. Is it 21 days or two weeks? I think it's I've 21 days. Weeks. Is it two weeks? Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're in one place for once. <laughs> <laughs> we're in one place, uh, which we haven't been in the past two years. So... With this challenge, I think what we should do, and we're going to lead by example. So we are going to consistently create content on the daily, and that content will include our fitness and nutrition. So it's going to be creating engaging content with trending sounds, oh. making healthy food recipes, okay, and going to the gym. Like I said, obviously we're not going to the gym every single day. We're going every other week, or sorry, we're going every other day because that's what works for us that's a habit that we can sustain so by creating content every day i mean we can change interchange the different types of content we're making so one day we'll be making a recipe or a snack or something that we're doing with our coffee or our tea Mm. the next day it'll be a snippet from our workout and then maybe another one will be something with humor and our behind the scenes so starting that habit and hopefully we can build it to be a little bit more consistent with our daily routine Okay. I like it. You just threw that at me. I didn't even know. We didn't even talk about this. Uh, where should we host people? Do you think we should use a discord? Should we on Facebook, Instagram? How, what do people want? We also where this is going live tomorrow. So you can drop your comments. We're probably going to give it about a week, have some input, people's feedback, and then we're going to create this group probably on Facebook, I feel like, or Instagram. We're going to start at February 1st, February 1st. Okay. So like fresh start of a month. Yeah, so. fit February, we'll call it. The importance of this is the fact that you can be a part of this, whether you are just starting your fitness journey, whether you are a fitness supermodel, we welcome those, <laughs> or whether you are a bodybuilder or anyone in between. Uh, <laughs> the fact of the matter is this group is inclusive. This is a community that's going to push each other to new levels i think it could be fun for anyone participating (laughs) and that can be coaches parents athletes of all different ages and i think just being present whether you're creating the content yourself or you're engaging with the content that we're creating and being part of this community whatever way that participation looks like for you we want to join you into this challenge we think it's going to be a lot of fun i'm hoping it's going to build some habits that we're going to be able to sustain and keep going forward with our brand. Cause we're building our brand here too on the athletes podcast as individuals on TikTok. on TikTok, follow at fee and Dave. Yeah. A little, <laughs> little humble plug there. A little fee dot Dave at fee dot Dave, 1.7 million views. No big deal. We're kind of a big deal on TikTok couple channels. I think we, we might start trending. Uh, what should be our hashtag, uh, for this challenge? I, I don't really love the word challenge. I hope I just want to make sure that's out there. So a challenge is something that you pursue, overcome onto the next, right? Mm-hmm. This is life. Like we're all high performers, athletes that want to continue to progressively overload our bodies so that we can consistently get better, be stronger, get faster, move better, be more flexible. So, so the priority of this episode has been talking about some small manageable habits, how to work out, create content during your varsity opportunities at the collegiate level, pro level. Really at any stage of life that you're in. Yeah. It's social media is there to stay. It's not like it's going anywhere. So you have an opportunity to take advantage and build a platform that you own, Mm -hmm. whether that's Instagram, TikTok, an email list, a newsletter. There are so many options out there right now. You could start a podcast. I highly encourage you to start a podcast actually let me know, reach out. I'm happy to help. Can put you in touch with a really good producer, editor. Let me get Marketing those. content. So let's go with hashtag APFeb. APFeb, A-P-F-E-B. And every single day, the goal is either to post a video of you working out, a video of you eating something healthy, nutritious, drinking something healthy, nutritious, like athletes, apothecary tea, or maybe strategizing, planning, creating that content, even if it's just simply going for a walk and posting about that or AP towards building your personal brand. And in turn, we will ensure that we share that on the athletes podcast platform. 
whether you're on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, we're going to make sure that we are all over that. And in turn, we're going to have merchandise by the end of February. So every single person who participates will receive some type of AP merchandise. I'm going to say that. One AP merchandise piece, some shape or form. I'm not going to say what it is yet. I can't say, but we're going to make sure people are decked out in AP merchandise moving forward, especially those who take part in AP Feb and who listen to the Athletes Podcast on a consistent basis. I feel like I haven't been able to let you folks know who are listening how much we appreciate it. Every single person who hits that like button, who hits that subscribe button, literally makes the biggest difference in our lives. Just as a reminder, there are a million ways to build your social media platform. And some of the subjects, suggestions that we provided today are what we've seen to see success in the past. By no means are they going to guarantee success in the future. But what I can say is that I sincerely appreciate you folks for tuning into this episode, every single one that you do moving forward. I know you might be watching this on your phone, on your computer, wherever you're consuming it, listening in it on the background, simply hitting that subscribe button takes a second out of your day, but it does mean the world to me. And I just want to reiterate that I really appreciate everyone who's supporting us now because in five, 10 years down the road, as we continue to bring on incredible individuals like Phoenix, uh, we will continue to provide you folks with not only knowledge, entertainment, education, but also some incredible merchandise. That being said, if we did... If there is anything that we didn't mention as far as growing your brand on social media, any tips or tricks that have worked for you and you want to share with the audience, please comment on this video, share with us on social media, send us a DM. We will read every each and every one of those and we can then share that knowledge with the audience as well. So if you have any tips or tricks, comment down below. Yeah. And we read the YouTube comments and I reply to them and some of them are pretty damn funny. I also appreciate it when I get chirped every once in a while. I haven't been in the hockey dressing room in a bit. So, you know, people light me up about the new haircut. Sometimes I mispronounce words. It's okay. I got thick skin. Drop it down below. Let me know where we have improvements here in 2024. That's what Feb, AP Feb is all about. And that's what we're all about as a couple. That's why we're continuing to see success. See that? Success. Uh, Nearly two and a half, three years in the books. Thank you for coming on the Athletes Podcast, Phoenix. Thank you for having me. I appreciate your insights, your wisdom, your marketing expertise. I'm very excited to see the results from this episode because I think people listening are going to put them into action. We're going to have a crazy February. If you want to start brainstorming ideas with us, drop us a comment, shoot us a note. We're going to add you to the group. Uh, We're probably going to have a couple hundred people here over the next couple weeks jump in. And every single person, like I said, is going to get some piece of merchandise. We're going to hook you up. We're going to make sure that everyone who takes part is well, well, well compensated. That's the word I was looking for. I'm excited because it's not only going to hold our audience accountable, but it's going to hold us accountable because we need to be leading by example. And so I'm excited. It'll be a bit of a kick in the butt that I think we need Yeah, we, um, I mean, during we, the winter months to be on top of things. We took some before and after pictures yesterday and uh, those will probably be in whatever group we put. <laughs> oh, maybe not. She doesn't like the idea of that. Hey, hey, sometimes you got to showcase where you're at. Sometimes it's not the best in the world. I, by no means am I at the best physical state that I've ever been, but I'm definitely not at the worst. And and we're starting. so And we're somewhere. working. And we're excited to have you folks along for the ride. Can't thank you enough for tuning into this episode, the 210th. Let us know how we did down below, who we can bring on to make sure that we provide you the most value on the Athletes Podcast. Again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next week. Bye.